Good morning. How are you today? Well, it's cold. We have uh, snow and uh, talk of rain and flurries, but right now it's not too bad, and there's not much of a wind either. The, uh, the agenda in Washington, D.C., where paralysis has been the word of the day for years under Mitch McConnell, the question is how do we go forward to get the stimulus funds that would make a difference in the pandemic. The Democrats have a uh, $1.9 trillion proposal, and uh, they've been trying to get Republicans to work with them, but it's more of the same old Moscow Mitch paralysis, except for 10 senators who have made a proposal which is about a third of Biden's proposal, and it doesn't include money for localities, and it probably has eliminated things like the uh, the minimum wage and so forth. And it's interesting that the Republicans, even as they're trying to find an agreement, say things like, oh, the Democrats are just trying to take care of their constituencies. <laughs> yes, like uh, people who are working hard, who are earning too low a wage, that's our constituency. Why isn't that everybody's constituency? Anyhow, uh, I have spoken before about how in a parliamentary system there are combinations made between what might be the slim majority <coughs> party, the Democrats, and factions of, say, another party, in this case, a split Republican party. Uh, I suppose there's some hope, I don't know how meager it is, if 10 senators come forward, if they were ever to become a working partner with the Democrats, then we could get a lot done, or we'd get some things done in the Congress. Now, those 10 senators are going to go up to the White House and talk to Biden today, and so uh, that's a good step to have conversation. Uh, unity with any component of the Republican Party remains in doubt. Uh, and the difference between the groups is great, but when you bargain, they started at a third, we have a full stop. So where do you end up in between if you actually bargain? And I have to assume that they've figured out what their second and third offers are, that is the Republicans. So some compromise, if it was sustainable, would be uh, a good way going forward. I don't have much hope for it working this time, but conversation for future times is good. So that would mean in the next week or so, we'd probably uh, pass through budget reconciliation, which only takes a majority vote, and uh, we would be dealing for the first time with a democratic uh, item that they carried from beginning to end. And that's well, it's exciting in the sense that people are hurting, and this will help. The second thing, of course, is the impeachment of he whom we would rather forget about, Trump. And uh, he apparently couldn't get the lawyers he had lined up to agree that his defense should be he won the election, which is bizarre because uh, I guess you could say I won the election, but it's the insurrection, fella. That's the problem here. People died. You organized it. So you can't just get away with it. Uh, well, uh, he's on to a new set of lawyers, and maybe they've convinced him that, you know, impeachment is unconstitutional here since he's not in office. But the argument is pretty straightforward in the sense that he was in office when impeached. And what sense can you make of the provision in the Constitution <clears throat> that you can bar somebody from holding public office for life? And I think that carries the day, really. The uh, Times has uh, more details on how Trump was involved in the insurrection, if you will. And I ex expect that the managers, by the time they start this uh, shindig on February the 9th, will have an order, even more evidence. So while I was against delay, and some of you thought <laughs> a little bit of delay and we'll get more evidence are going to be proven true. Uh, it does happen in every investigation. Of course, at the beginning, you would think this was a no-brainer. Convict him, punish him, and push back, therefore, on insurrectionists across the country. 
Now, as I talk to you, there are uh, 28 states that have bills to clamp down on elections, meaning to make it harder to vote. And this is a response to the last election. And in those 28 states, and I haven't drawn the diagram, you can be sure that those are red states or uh, purple states. And the legislatures are dominated by Republicans. So that's a problem. And I see that since it's early enough, if they pass the legislation now, we can deal with it either in the legislature or the courts. But we're growing an autocracy in the Republican Party, which is splitting the Republican Party, and will divide the nation as to what's fair and right. And to have spent all these years in the history of America and to still be vo fighting over voting rights, that's a shame and a disgrace. Also, how we appear to the world is important because Trump uh, had a miserable time with other nations. And Biden hopes to have a conference, a world conference that he hopes to head. But we have to clean up our act a little bit, meaning get rid of the remnants in policy and otherwise of the Trump presidency. So uh, that's my thinking for the day. And uh, I'm glad it's not <laughs> icy rain and snow and wind right now, but it will be. I'm walking on kind of a flat road, so I think it's pretty safe. So be well, be very safe, uh, because, uh, well, the virus is going to get worse before it gets better. And the more we resist it by doing practices, you know, all the ones, mask, distance, cleaning hands, the more we do that, the more we insulate the possibility of spread. So be well. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.